Okay, by now you've probably heard of Armstrong's short span, and you're interested in learning more about how it can simplify your drywall ceiling and soffit framing. Let's face it, you need to take it to the next level and learn all you can about the product. Well, if you just give me 15 minutes, I will cover everything A to Z about using short span and how it will speed up and simplify your drywall framing. Let me introduce to you the new short span. What's different? Well, it's an inch and 13 sixteenths tall with a new peak form bulb. What does that do? It makes it stronger. In fact, now short span peak form will carry a single layer of 5 8 inch drywall, eight foot six, with absolutely no support to structure. If you're still framing hard lids in rooms 17 feet wide or less with drywall mains and four foot cross tees, or if you're even using cold rolled and hat channel, you are spending unnecessary resources running supports to structure. In this example of a 14 by 20 foot room with mains four feet on center, you will install 15 wires to structure. With short span peak form, you will only need five wires. Plus, you can space your tees 24 inches on center, even in seismic DEF areas. Short span peak form is fully tested to perform at eight foot six and even seismic DEF areas. For maximum productivity, let's start with proper layout of our perimeter angle. We will be installing locking angle molding or LAM, which is an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter with locking tabs that occur every eight inches along the length of the angle. The last locking tab is spaced four inches from the end of the angle to ensure an even eight inch on center spacing from the first locking tab on the next angle. When beginning your first run of molding, cut to the center of the first locking tab. There's a little indent in the hem marking the center. Now, our first locking tab will be eight inches off the beginning of your first run of angle. You will notice four inch on center rectangular holes along the top side of the angle. These holes serve as a point to easily place your first screws. Of course, you are free to place your screws wherever you want on the vertical leg of the angle. Many installers use the four inch on center holes as a layout guide as well. Now, as we install locking angle mold on the opposing wall, parallel and opposite to the first wall that we installed, we will again cut off the first four inches to the center of the first locking tab. This will guarantee our tabs line up across the room. Okay, here's where you need to pay attention. If there are any columns or jogs in your wall, you will need to make sure not to install locking angle molding to the 90 degree returns just the portion of wall that faces the opposing wall. To do this, simply cut your angle at the jog and push the locking angle back or pull it forward. On the 90 degree returns, just install scrap lamb or cam utility angle. See here how the lamb was cut and pushed back to the facing wall. With lamb, you need to make sure your screw attachments are to the studs 16 inches on center. At the column, see how our lamb continues while maintaining locking tab spacing to the opposing wall's lamb molding. At the end of the column, we are now pushing back the lamb while maintaining the locking tab spacing with the opposite wall's tabs. On the column's returns, we just install scrap lamb or Armstrong cam utility angle. See how the locking tabs are only on the wall's face and not the returns? This maintains proper eight inch on center locking tab layout from wall to opposing wall. Since short span tees only run in one direction across the room, the two other walls of the room do not need locking angle molding. Just install cam utility angle here. Cam utility angle comes an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and two inch widths and always with a hemmed edge so there are no sharp edges. We're going to run short span tees across this room. If I space short span peak form on 16 inch centers, it will carry a single layer of 5 8 inch drywall eight foot six across the room with no support to structure, even in seismic DEF areas. 
If I space the tees on 24 inch centers, it will carry 5 8 drywall, 7 foot 6. Pause a moment and even screenshot these two handy membrane loading charts for the new short span peak form. Our room is measuring out at 10 foot 3 and a half inches wide. When cutting my short span tees to length, I need to make sure always to install this flattened bulb in the same direction. I'll show you why in just a bit. Short span is made from 018 or 25 gauge steel. It's easy to cut. First, I'm making a template from my first cut to gauge my other cuts off of. Assuming my room is square, if I use this template, I can easily measure where to cut my other tees. If you need to cut a bunch at the same length, you can always just chop saw the whole bundle of short span tees. Now that my angle is up and aligned, plus my tees are cut, it's time to install. Locking angle mold eliminates the need to measure accurate tee placement. Plus, it eliminates the need to screw your tee to your wall angle. Imagine the time you will save with no measuring or screwing down a long corridor. Remember that column we laid our lamb or locking angle mold around? Notice how my tee spaced perfectly 24 inches from the neighboring tee. No measuring was required at all, plus I lost the screws with lamb's simplicity. If your span is over 8 foot 6 inches, like our room, we will either need to wire tie each tee to structure at mid-span or utilize this flattened out bulb that I showed you earlier. Our first tee is 24 inches off the starting wall. SB12P Strongback will ultimately bear the load, which will require us to only install a wire every four feet to structure in rooms over eight foot six inches wide. In seismic DEF areas, wires or supports need to be anchored to the Strongback every three feet. The Strongback simply drops onto the flattened bulb before being slid back to engage the peak form bulb. Hey, if you haven't noticed, only one installer is needed to install short span. You also can open the notch on the strong back to engage the short span bulb, provided you close the notch around the bulb with your pliers. Previously, I bent the strong back end 90 degrees into what I call a hockey stick. By anchoring the hockey stick to a wall stud, your first wire can be four feet from the wall, three feet in seismic DEF areas. If you don't install a hockey stick, your first wire will need to be at the first short span T. When tying your 12 gauge wires to the strong back, you need to make sure you tie tight loops around the bulb of the strong back. This will keep the strong back and short span tight for when you finally load it down with drywall. Your next wire will be four feet over from the first, three feet over in seismic DEF areas. If you don't have any 12 gauge wires in your project, you can always tie strong back to structure with a scrap T or stud. Splicing the ends of strong back is easily done by just overlapping them four inches, then C clamping and screwing them together as shown here. What if you don't have any room to suspend your short span and you have to be uptight to structure with your short span? The uptight clip can position short span flush to structure or as far away as five and a half inches from structure. This eliminates the need for securing seven eighths inch hat channel to an uneven deck. Just think of the shots that you'll save alone. The locking pocket short span main has eight inch on center locking tabs, just like the lamb that we just installed. When mounted up tight to structure, you can span short span up to eight foot six off both sides of the locking pocket main. The up tight clip does a great job securing strong back to structure as well, as shown here. 
You may come upon a condition where you need to splice a scrap piece of short span to a full length of short span T. It's easy to splice two pieces together with a 10 inch piece of scrap and two screws on either side of the splice. You can also use your strong back to splice two short span tees together. Simply offset your tees in opposite directions eight inches off from each other. It is necessary to overrun your floating short span tee at least 12 inches beyond the strong back, then secure in place with a screw on both sides of the strong back into the short span bulb. One of the nicest things about short span is how fast and easy it is to frame device openings like access doors, lighting, or mechanicals. Cut T-sections simply rest in place to form your opening, then are easily clamped and screwed into place. Scrap T's rest on the flange of others. When screwing short span together, make sure to always use sharp point screws, not self-drillers. If it is necessary to flush out the inside of the short span opening, 5 8 inch rips of drywall resting on the T's flange flush out the T's edge perfectly. Make sure to secure with screws through the bulb of the short span. Also, Armstrong Cam Utility Angle flushes out device openings as well. Ah, soffits. This is where you really experience short span's efficiencies. Notice these traditional black iron and hat channel soffits and how they need support to structure every four feet, not eight foot six like short span. Also, did you notice how many screws are required to splice hat channel pieces together? Here we are going to come off the wall with a flat short span ceiling then fur up with a soffit return to structure, commonly found in most hospitality and condo construction. Cam angle has been secured to structure, while cut short span T-sections are then screw attached to hang wild. The use of a laser ensures your T's drops are level and plumb. When installing short span in all drywall grid, always make sure to use sharp point framing screws for securing components together not self-drillers. Now that our short span T soffit drops are secured, we need to install cam utility angle. Here we are using cam 151020E. Once the cam is secured and level, we will have a nice flange for our horizontal short span returns to the wall. Our six foot horizontal short span returns simply rest on the cam at the wall and the cam at the drop. All that's needed is to screw attach the short span to the cam once clamped in place and leveled. If this was a soffit return using traditional hat channel, it would be necessary to secure each piece to structure at the four foot mark. The remaining short span tees need to be secured to the lamb at the wall's locking tabs and to the cam at the soffit. First, two-way laser alignment is used to make sure the soffits are perfectly square. Finally, install one screw to join the webs of both tees together at the bend. Since this soffit is not tied to another wall and just returns vertically, you will need to screw attach the horizontal short span to the wall to eliminate pullout at the locking tabs. The best kept secret of short span and all drywall grid is half of a T is 5 eighths of an inch. Therefore, 5 eighths inch drywall tucks perfectly into the open ends of soffits to fill the void. When securing your drywall to the short span T, Make sure to place your screws through the bulb of the short span. A reference line makes this easy. Ready to get started? What can you build with? Short span. <laughs>